Hi folks, back again. Uh, this is the Bathrobe Chronicles number 21. It's uh, <laughs> almost unbelievably 4.45 in the morning. Uh, I had not, not planned on anything tonight, frankly. Uh, but I just finished reading a newspaper report and uh, or article or whatever you want to call it. And I just felt like I had to put something out here. Not that there's anyone listening to me, <laughs> but if there is. And it was pretty darn sad. It's uh, 16 years ago, a young fellow who at the time I think was about 27, 28, 29, some, somewhere in that range, a young fellow who seemingly had never had any involvement with the police, had never done anything criminal in his life, seemed like a really nice guy. In fact, he had just recently, at the time of his murder, uh, gotten out of the Navy, had a, uh, a prestigious job with the Navy, uh, you know, one of these appointments that's quite competitive and things like that. Anyway, 16 years ago, he and his best pal were murdered. Uh, it seems as though uh, they were both shot in the back of the head. They were in a car. Uh, both of the uh, young fellows who were murdered were sitting in the front seat. And it uh, would, would seem as though, obviously, the person was in the back seat and shot them both in the head. The article seemed to revolve around the dad, who is now 17, excuse me, 79 years old. The murder happened 16 years ago. And we always hear in the newspaper and on TV and stuff like that, we hear about people wanting closure. You know, I, I, I guess what folks are talking about is, gosh, if we find the murderer, murderer there will be closure. Uh, I just can't even fathom how this, this gentleman of 79 must feel. The last 16 years, he's just been waiting for this closure for, for the murderer or murderers to be found. Um, the article was something. It was it was extremely well written, in my opinion, and it was touching. It really was. You, I have no way of knowing how this gentleman feels, none whatsoever. But you can almost sit here and imagine him sitting in his home, just waiting. You know, waiting, waiting for something to happen, waiting for the police to call and say, gosh, we, we, we caught this person or these persons. Though at this time, I think he's sort of resigned to knowing that most likely is not going to happen. And of course, he's <laughs> looking at the, uh, what do we call it, the Grim Reaper, you know, the gentleman's 79 years old. How many more years does he have? And that's what he's saying. How many more years does he have? Why the hell I'm uh, babbling like a moron tonight, I'm not quite sure. Um, every once in a while when I feel sorry for myself, I jokingly say, hey, what the hell? I could be an 18, 19 year old kid in Iraq or Afghanistan or somewhere else getting shot at. Um, but I don't know, this, this sort of just struck a note with me, to <laughs> use that phrase, and um, I don't know. Is there anything we can learn from this? Well, most of us uh, are, uh, are in much better shape, for lack of a better word, than this, than this gentleman who, you know, for 16 years, 
article talked about he calls the police occasionally and the police say oh we'll call you back and they don't I'm not condemning the police I'm not the police I don't know what's going on with the police um, I don't know I, I, I just felt like I had to <laughs> to babble a little bit about this um, you know we all uh, uh, at times feel sorry for ourselves whatever that means you know we we have a little upset in life uh, we don't get promoted or or uh, you know our girlfriend is mad at us or or you know those kinds of things and we make a big deal out of it uh, our football team didn't win the whatever our NASCAR driver didn't do well. <laughs> I mean, but you know, folks, sometimes we need to get things in perspective. And when you consider how most of our lives are, I mean, we have our ups and downs, and we have things that are distressing for us, and, and all of the other baloney. But when you get right down to it, we could be this gentleman, 79 years old, who for 16 years has been sitting there wondering what the fuck happened to his son and the overall scheme of things most of us most of us have it so much better anyway Sometimes you just wonder, you know, what kind of society we're living in now. Uh, I know I live in an area, <laughs> I hate to admit it, I'm not sure how many people. <laughs> I would imagine seven, eight hundred thousand, you know, in the, in, in the area here. And it's, it's almost daily, you know, people being murdered. Almost daily. You know, it's, it's not that unusual to take a look at the paper, go to the internet or whatever, and, and you know, every day someone's murdered, two people are murdered, three people are murdered, drive-by shootings, drive-by this, and you wonder, I don't know, have, have things gotten worse, or is it just the way our 24-hour reporting, so to speak, is now, you know, with the internet and and the other kinds of things out there. Um, I don't know. Of course, I'm being mod. I guess I'm a little maudlin tonight. Uh, I guess I felt compelled to do this because, uh, you know, for most of us, even though we have like the regular problems that a lot of us have, uh, you know. Our job sucks, <laughs> and we think we're underpaid, and we're overworked, and people piss on us, and all the other kind of things. Folks, hey, if we're putting one foot in front of the other, if we have a job, whether we like it or not, if we have a job, if we're able to pay the bills, it's not all that bad, you know? We could be this gentleman who's 79 years old, who for 16 years has been waiting for this call from the police department so he can have closure in his son's death. What do you think? You want to trade places with him? Anyway, as I said, uh, I hadn't planned on running my mouth tonight, but I read this article, which was truly touching uh, by this local reporter, and uh, I just had to do this, so I guess that's it. And yes, as Pat Condell would say, 
Peace.